Hello everyone, back to you in today's second video. I'm going to do Gas Up with Sunny Roundup for today's second video. So this is your usual sunny after afternoon eclectic mix of this and that. We're going to be looking at things like solar activity, sea surface temperature anomalies in the Atlantic Pacific Pacific Oceans, what's happening with ENSO, QBO, the quasi biennial oscillation, Arctic and North Atlantic oscillations, and also the weather for the next week to 10 days as well. So a lot to cram in, and I will get on with the study roundup for you very shortly. Just say that the first video of today was the summer 2019 analogues update, the fifth one. So this one is uh, having a look at March precipitation. Uh, we are looking at March 2019 um, precipitation for England, Wales, and then then uh, finding other years that had a similar uh, March precipitation and then seeing what the summers were like in those years uh, with that sort of similar uh, March precipitation. Quite interesting. Watch the video is here on my home page right now. Later on today, we'll place on the summer updates forecast page with a written summary, uh, just going over everything that we discussed in the video. So you'll be able to watch that on demand and also have a read of that written summary this evening. And later on today, around uh, 4 or 5 o'clock probably, we're going to have the uh, countdown, going to begin the countdown to Easter. So Easter updates will begin at Gauss Weather this later on today. It's within this uh, extended time frame of the GFS now, just a couple of weeks away. Uh, and so Easter updates begin at Gaswell Vids uh, later today. It's going to be quite uh, interesting indeed, I think. But uh, let's get on with the Gaswell Vids study roundup for you right now. So we're going to begin by having a look at solar activity. And this is how things are looking on the solar disk on our side of the disk today from Soham.net. So no sunspots today. We have got a uh, spotless solar disk and therefore Soham is uh, reporting that uh, solar activity is at very low levels, no sunspots at all, and will remain at very low levels, or is forecast to remain at very low levels for the next three days. This is the Gals Web is Sunny Roundup Solar Activity Tracker, updated by good friend James Aquil up to yesterday, the 6th of uh, April. So we have had a bit of solar activity actually over the past uh, few days. We can, uh, the orange line here is depicting each individual day's uh, worth of sunspots. And you see we are getting these spikes up at the moment. I uh, had quite a big one there um, around the 24th of March. Then a few days of spotlessness. Uh, but in recent days, uh, through the first week of April, we have actually, actually had some more uh, sunspots. Now we've gone spotless once again. So a little bit up and down with uh, solar activity at the moment. And this, I think, is probably telling us we haven't uh, yet bottomed out with solar cycle uh, number 24. We are at solar minimum. So what we have to say about these spikes of solar activity is that generally they are very, very low levels of activity. Um, but we probably haven't reached true uh, the true solar minimum yet. Uh, we are in solar minimum, but we probably, probably haven't reached the end of this solar cycle. Because when we get to that point, we will probably get um, maybe several weeks, maybe even uh, a few months of really uh, spotless conditions on the solar disk. So that's normally what happens anyway when you're at solar uh, minimum. So I would suspect we're going to see these trend lines, which are the thick green, and the thick red lines, I suspect we will see those ticking down over the next few days once again. Um, but still a little bit up and down. We haven't, I don't think we've finished with solar cycle number 24 just yet. We are almost finished with it, but I don't think we're quite finished with it just yet. I think that's what the solar activity tracker is telling us. We're going to be doing solar Sunday. Uh, two weeks today, Easter Sunday, will be solar Sunday. So uh, that's going to be quite an uh, exciting uh, day. We haven't done a solar Sunday since last summer, I don't think. So um, they're very uh, rare at Gas so We only do uh, one or two a year and we are going to be doing so Sunday on Easter Sunday uh, this year so a couple of weeks and we'll be formally um, solar Sunday big thank to James for updating the uh, Gals of his uh, solar activity tracker and uh, we'll be keeping an eye on that over the next few weeks and months of course this is how the uh, oceans were looking this time uh, last week 28th of March we've got our three areas of interest the Enso region is just here. The Northern Pacific Ocean is just here and the North Atlantic Ocean over uh, there. So when we did last week's Sunday Roundup, that's how the sea surface temperature anomalies were looking. Let's compare to the very latest. This is how things are looking uh, now. So let's deal with the ENSO region. 
first of all, from Peru over towards Indonesia. Uh, so again, let's go back to last week and then go forwards to this week, uh, 4th of April. Again, very little change in the Enso region. We still have this signature of a very, very weak El Nino uh, event. It's still there, but it, uh, it it is a very, very weak event. It is weakening compared to uh, what happened in February when we actually had some strengthening of the uh, El Nino uh, event. So, warm and average sea surface temperature anomalies across the equatorial Pacific at the moment. At a weak level, no sign yet of going into El Nino, no sign yet of a cold event emerging. Further north in the Pacific Ocean, again, this is how things were looking uh, last week, go through to the latest. Uh, so very little change, uh, really, I think, looking quite stable in the northern Pacific Ocean. This cold area just here, over towards the Pacific coast of America, that appears, that appears to be intensifying. Uh, again, really quite cold indeed, uh, just there. But otherwise, things looking very, very stable. Over in the North Atlantic, again, let's have a look at last week. That's how things are looking last week in the Atlantic Ocean. That's how things are looking uh, now. So, again, everything is very, very stable. It's rather warmer than average down across the tropical uh, Atlantic. In the Northern Atlantic, we still have that cold area sea surface temperature anomalies to the south of Greenland. Uh, been a semi-permanent sort of feature over the past few years. It doesn't look as though that cold area is going anywhere uh, just yet in between. It's uh, relatively uh, mild with the upper with the sea surface temperature anomalies rather above average really through that central part of North Atlantic. So everything's very stable. There's very little change. There hasn't really been much change to either the Pacific or Atlantic Oceans for uh, several weeks. I think just looking very, very much as you were over the uh, past few weeks. Now, I've had an update from the cold and warm episodes by season uh, chart at uh, CPC and NOAA. So this is depicting every month's worth of, uh, or every sort of El Nino and La Nina event over tri-monthly periods, going right way back to uh, 1950. So, for example, in 1950, we have a cold event, a La Nina going on, indicated by these uh, negative blue numbers, minus 1.05 uh, for the tri-month period of uh, December, January, February, tells us that for that winter of 49.50, there was a uh, La Nina, a cold event going on. El Nino is depicted by the red positive numbers. So, for example, coming down to 1958, we can see that there was an El Nino in the winter of 1957-1958, quite a moderate El Nino, borderline strong, um, the trimester period of uh, December, January, February. For 1958, has uh, that red number plus 1.8. That tells us quite a quite a moderate to almost strong El Nino event taking place for that winter of 1957-1958. Coming down through the decades, we get to our latest year. And you'll notice that uh, now we have got red numbers appearing for 2018, 2019. So that's 2018 just there. That's 2019 uh, just there. We begin 2018 with a week landing your event. Then we go to Enso Neutral. Now you'll see we have got these uh, red numbers. So the first one appears for the tri-monthly period of September, October, November at 0 0.7. Then the next one is 0 0.9. Then the next one is 0 0.8. Uh, we go through to December, January, February, tri-monthly period, 0 0.8. And then January, February, March, uh, 2019, 0 0.8. To get an El Nino designated, you have to meet strict criteria. You have to be half a degree or more above average. So we've done that, of course, with these uh, 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5. They're all over half a degree or more above average. Uh, and also, but you have to do that over five trimonthly periods, which we have now done. So that's the reason that these numbers have been coloured in red. Uh, we've got one, two, three, four, and five trimonthly periods going above half a degree, so two or above half a degree or more above average. And so this tells us that we have now had an officially designated very, very weak El Nino. This is kind of like the same sort of thing that happened 
in 2014-2015. You see those red numbers just there, uh, 0 0.6, 0 0.7, 0 0.6, 0 0.6, 0 0.6. So just a borderline sort of elder year. But that one then took off through the middle and second half of 2015, took off into a super El Nino for the winter of 2015-2016. I'll be very surprised if that happened again this year. I would be very, very surprised if we had a, a super Nino coming so soon after the last one in 2015-2016. But you never rule anything out uh, with the weather, so you've just got to wait and see. Uh, where things go now but we can certainly say that winter of 2018-2019 was a weak El Nino uh, winter. Southern Oscillation Index uh, is an index that, re that reflects the atmospheric state in the Southern Pacific Ocean. It's measuring the pressures between the air pressures between Darwin and Tahiti. And uh, this is one of the things that we look at to tell us what the atmospheric state is doing in terms of uh, ENSO. Uh, this is from the Bureau of Meteorology in Australia. So if we scroll down uh, and have a look at these numbers. So when you've got negative numbers, the atmospheric state is going to be reflective of an uh, El Nino event. So, for example, on the 27th of March, we've got the SOI at uh, minus 12.83. That tells us that on that day, the atmospheric state in the Southern Ocean in the Pacific was uh, reflective of an El Nino uh, event. If we scroll up to the latest, though, we can see actually we've got some quite positive numbers now starting to appear during April. So, for example, on the 1st of April, we do actually begin the month with a negative number, uh, minus 0 0.40, and then the 2nd of April is minus 8.29. So, those are still reflective of El Nino. But look what happens on the 3rd of April. We go to plus 9. 0.66. That's the atmospheric state swinging into more of a La Nina type uh, setup. And then we go through to the 4th of April at plus 17.23, very positive. 5th of April goes even more positive to plus 23.36. And then the 6th of April comes out at uh, plus 13.84. The final day that we've got for the SOI is the 7th of April. Of course, they're ahead of us in Australia. So 7th of April has already occurred uh, down there. And they're at plus 11.53. So, during the first week of April, the SOI has shifted, it's swung into a positive phase. That tells us that the atmospheric state at the moment in the Southern Ocean is reflecting a cold event. It's reflecting uh, La Nina. If this was to continue and to strengthen through the remainder of the spring and into the summer, that would really put a dampener on those uh, warmer than average sea surface temperature anomalies that we've currently got in the Equatorial Pacific Ocean. We'll put a dampener on El Nino, if you like, and we will probably start shifting more towards a cold event. We'll probably start shifting more towards a La Nina by the time you get through to the summer and the autumn. Of course, only a few days' worth of data that has gone into a uh, La Nina type setup. So it's far too early to say that we're seeing a definitive shift from El Nino to uh, La Nina. And we just have to keep an eye on where this is going over the next few weeks and months. But it is interesting that very much with the turn of a month from March to April, we have seen a shift of the SOI, at least uh, a temporary one. QBO next, the quasi biennial oscillation, uh, that's been updated uh, for March. So this is from NOAA. It's depicting each individual month's QBO go right way back to the 1950s. Uh, when you've got a negative number, you're in an easterly uh, QBO. When you've got a positive number, you are in a westerly QBO. This is primarily um, something that we use for winter forecasting. When the uh, QBO is in a westerly phase, when you are strengthening the zone of westerlies across the uh, northern hemisphere. Uh, when the uh, QBO is in its easy phase, you are weakening the uh, zonal flow across the northern hemisphere. So a westerly QBO kind of like goes with an increased chance of a mild westerly zonal winter. Easterly QBO goes uh, with a chance of a more blocked, colder type northern hemispheric 
uh, pattern. Although it's not quite that straightforward because you do get several, or we have had several Carl Winters that have occurred with a Wesley QBO, and equally we've had several Michael Winters that have occurred with an Eastley QBO. So nothing is ever straightforward with the weather. But we do look at this year round because it's uh, it can also have impacts on other seasons as well. So if we see the year there of uh, 1955, for example, we start 1955 with these uh, negative numbers, so an Eastley QBO in the beginning of 1959. That switched to a Westerly QBO both through the spring and summer of 1955. Before going into 1956, it reverts back to an Eastley QBO again, as those positive, uh, of those negative numbers, I should say, uh, reappear through the course of 1956 into 1957, keeping those negative numbers. So again, ECQBO from the beginning of 1957 before it switches back to the Wesley QBO again through the middle and second half of 1957. And so on it goes. Uh, the QBO is a very, very regular sort of rhythm within the axis, almost like a pulse, should be continuous, should be regular, going from these uh, easterly to westerly uh, QBO phases. So coming down to the uh, current year of 2019, well, we begin at 2018, actually, because that starts off with a very strong easterly QBO. These very, very negative numbers through the first half of 2018, reaching its peak, that easterly QBO in July last year, went down to minus 29.10. After that, very quickly, the easterly QBO faded and started to switch back into the westerly phase of the QBO. First westerly QBO month happened to be November at plus 3.36. And then we went through into winter months and we kept that Wesley QBO uh, going. Quite a rapid switch, actually, into the Wesley phase of the QBO. The latest number shows that for March we have seen a strengthening of this Wesley QBO, as you would expect, really. So uh, in February, the QBO number comes out at 9.25 plus 9.25. Two five. That's February. For March, we come out at plus eleven point eight two. So the Wesley QBO has strengthened uh, during the course of uh, March, and of course this is going along with an increased zonal flow. So we have had a very strong westerly phase um, during, particularly uh, February and into March as well. We've had a uh, positive Arctic and North Atlantic oscillation going on. More on that in a moment. And uh, we certainly have seen a strengthening of the, of the zonal flow of the westerlies uh, during the first half of this year, coinciding with a strengthening of the westerly uh, QBO. I expect this westerly QBO to increase uh, in strength over the next few months. So that's April, that's May, that's June, that's July. All of those months could see a strengthening uh, of the uh, Wesley QBO. By turning it through to the final sort of three or four months of the year, we probably will see a weakening of Wesley QBO by the winter, by 2019-2020. Uh, we will probably be reverting back into the easterly QBO as well. But for now, we see a strengthening of the Westerly uh, QBO. We continue to see strengthening Wesley QBO uh, conditions. So this is the Arctic Oscillation Observed and Forecast chart. The black line here shows where we've been with the Arctic Oscillation red lines at the end where the uh, GFS ensembles are forecasting the Arctic Oscillation uh, to go over the next couple of weeks. Remember, all of these indexes, be they the Southern Oscillation Index, be they the uh, Quasar-Bean Oscillation, be they the Arctic Oscillation, North Atlantic Oscillation, they are all just reflecting the atmospheric state. None of them are actually driving the weather. They are being driven. These indexes are being driven by the weather. So through uh, February and most of March, we was in a positive phase of the Arctic Oscillation. You see that black line there, very positive territory. Around the switch from March to April, the uh, Arctic Oscillation goes negative. That's where we are right now, very negative with the Arctic Oscillation. And the GFS ensembles are forecasting the Arctic Oscillation to stay negative as we go into the middle and second half of April. Possibly as possibly signs that it's beginning to recover into the second half of April, perhaps back to uh, near a neutral condition. But overall, it looks like we've entered into another negative phase of the uh, AO. 
So this tells us that we've got high pressure up in the northern latitudes. So um, remember, it's always weather that drives the index. So the reason that the Arctic Oscillation would be negative is that you'd have high pressure up over the pole. When the Arctic Oscillation is positive, then you'll have low pressure up over the North Pole. So this tells us that we've got blocking uh, somewhere in the North Pole uh, at the moment. And then the North Atlantic Oscillation, very, very similar. So the black line again tells where we've been with the NAO. Red line's at the end where the GFS ensembles are forecasting the NAO to go. We have been in a very, very prolonged positive phase of the North Atlantic Oscillation. You have to go right way back to last autumn, can you believe, to find a protracted period of negativity of the NAO. We are still positive with the NAO right now, but the GFS ensembles are taking us negative for the first time in uh, many, many months go right way back to around October or November, I think, the LEO takes us into a pronounced period of uh, negativity. So uh, up to the middle part of April anyway, we see the NAO is quite clearly uh, negative. Again, similar to the AO, as we get through into the second half of April, we possibly see signs of a recovery back to neutral conditions with the uh, North Atlantic Oscillation. Um, so maybe a sign, uh, but as we get into the second half of April, we will start to see the weather patterns uh, sort of normalising themselves a little bit and going back more towards the Azores high and low pressure around uh, Iceland. But certainly the first half of April, it, it looks like it'll be dominated by a negative AO and NAO type uh, weather pattern, which is quite uh, unusual for the past few months anyway. Right, so let's have a look at the GFS upper air temperature and precipitation ensembles. The red line here is the 30-year upper air temperature average. We're warmer than average, milder than average at the moment. Going through the coming week, we're going to see the temperature lowering. This is looking at Manchester, <coughs> excuse me, in the northwest of England, by the way. So uh, we see pretty warm upper air temperatures at the moment, but the upper air temperatures are lowering as we go through the next few days. This cold spell that was... Um, predicted for the second half of the coming week. There's a bit of doubt about that now, uh, you'll notice. It certainly is going to cool down. We have a few members of the GFS ensembles that are still going quite cold. But I think this has been reduced a fair amount, actually, this cold snap coming up. Uh, that, well, that was forecast to come up in the second half of uh, the week. And as we go through into the second half of April, then it looks like we're going back to generally milder than average conditions once again. Precipitation-wise, it looks reasonably dry, really, although there are regular precipitation spikes coming through. But bear in mind, this is for Manchester, so it's one of the wettest places in the country. And that's a reasonably dry ensemble, actually. Actually, uh, for uh, for Manchester, there will be precipitation at uh, times, though, particularly for central and southern parts of England and Wales. Tomorrow and Tuesday could be some big showers, maybe even thundery showers coming up down in the south uh, on Monday and Tuesday. But after that, it looks like we we'll probably go into drier conditions, although not completely dry. There will be some showery bursts at times, but for Manchester, that is actually a reasonably dry uh, ensemble. Temperature anomalies are very close to average, maybe even hinting at being a little bit above average for England and Wales, perhaps a little bit below average for Scotland. This is from the 6th through to the 14th of April. That cold snap has been reduced a lot that was forecast for the second half of this coming week. Precipitation anomalies, again, very, very close to average, perhaps hinting at being a little bit wetter than average for southern parts of the country. But it's not a big deviation either way either for temperature or precipitation so uh, just quite close to average really temperature and precipitation from the 6th through to the 14th of April this is how the uh, GFS midnight run was looking uh, for Wednesday and we're bringing in these easterly winds on Wednesday high pressure dominating up uh, over Scandinavia and going towards Greenland so this is the reason the Arctic Oscillation is negative, that's the reason the high pressure that's sitting up here between uh, sort of Greenland and Scandinavia centred close to Iceland, that's pushed the AO into negative territory and that brings us these easy winds and had this been January we would have been looking at a spell of bitterly cold weather 
and snow. But of course, it's April. There's no real legacy of particularly cold air uh, left over the continent. So these are reasonably mild easy winds. Although there is quite a bit of cold air up here across northern parts of Scandinavia. And the idea a few days ago was that the, the easy wind was going to tap into like northeasterly winds. So the origins of the air would kind of like be north of east. And that was supposed to bring that cold air flooding down into the UK in the second half of this week. But now you'll notice really those north, the origins of the northeast is a kind of like in that area and we're keeping the wind generally due east with the origins of the air originating from sort of central and eastern parts of uh, Europe. Going through to Thursday and Friday. So again, we don't get those uh, winds coming from north of east. We keep them generally due easterly, which is um, not going to be overly cold but it will perhaps be a bit chilly especially for eastern parts of the country in the second half of the week next weekend a proper battle taking place we've got high pressure over Scandinavia we've got low pressure in the Atlantic they're fighting it out it looks as though we keep the winds generally from a south direction so reasonably mild potentially next weekend with any rain restricted uh, really to the far north and western part of the country into next week high pressure again is still there over Scandinavia if anything it starts to win the battle so that's how we look at day 10 which is wednesday the 17th of april against a high pressure over scandinavia that's dominating we're bringing in easy wind steel and there's some sort of trough there in the north sea so that could be enhancing the shower risk for the south and the east in particular and then in more extended range, this high pressure just, just continues to strengthen, really. So high pressure continues to be dominating the weather into extended range. That's Easter Sunday. Look at that. We've got high pressure still in control, albeit still with these easterly winds, particularly for England and Wales, probably feeding in quite a lot of cloud. But the overall idea is pretty dry. High pressure's in control. And the wind remains from an easterly direction, even into the second half of uh, April. GFS parallel run looking like that. Again, we've got those easterly winds coming up over the uh, next few days. Actually, that's yesterday's uh, 6 o'clock run. So if we just flip over to there, that's the midnight run from Sunday. And again, we've got these easterly winds coming in uh, across the country through the course of this week with the uh, parallel GFS run. They last into the weekend of, as well. This low pressure is being kept well and truly uh, at bay. Let's uh, go on a little bit further with the parallel GFS. So that's taking us into the beginning of next week. This is Monday, the 15th of April. So by then, the low pressure in the Atlantic is just getting a little bit closer to us with its weather front, trying to bring some outbreaks of rain into the south and west. But coming up against this high pressure over Scandinavia, probably weakening. Reasonably mild, though, the winds are coming up from a southeasterly uh, type direction. Let's get through to uh, day 10 with the uh, GFS parallel run. So we want to go to there. And actually, we see that low pressure weakening as the high pressure is still sticking there over Scandinavia. It's still holding in there. Let's move out into extended range. And high pressure just continues to dominate as we move up towards east. This is Good Friday, Friday 16th of uh, Friday 19th of April. The high pressure is dominating the weather. And it's shifted southwards. So we are drawing up a warmer southerly to southwesterly flow uh, for Easter as well. That looks quite nice. The very end of the GFS parallel run on Tuesday 23rd of April, just going a bit cooler as that high pressure begins to pull out to our west-southwest. But overall, these are very settled charts, really, coming up for April. A bit, there will be some showery bursts around at times, but high pressure is always uh, looking to be quite dominant, really, over the next couple of weeks. ECMWF again, got those winds in from the east on Wednesday. They're continuing to uh, Thursday and Friday. Uh, next weekend, the high pressure remains well and truly in control, centred over Scandinavia, still bringing in those easterly winds. They'll probably drag in a lot of cloud to eastern parts of the country, maybe a few showers as well. But for western areas, this is a nice weather pattern, actually. Western Scotland, Northern Ireland, Northwest England, West Wales, Southwest England. That's going to be the place to be, I would have thought, with this weather pattern. Pattern. should be reasonably dry and potentially quite warm in the sunshine too. Uh, that takes us up to uh, Monday the 15th of April. Again, the winds remain in from the east. If anything, that easterly is strengthening a little bit. That probably feel quite cold, especially on the east coast. And no real change as we get through today 10, which is Wednesday the 17th of April. That high pressure is still there sitting to our north and northeast. We're still bringing in these easterly 
uh, wings. So this looks like a very, very prolonged and protracted spell of easterlies uh, through the course of April. Not unusual at all. This often happens in the spring. I've said this in videos uh, before. I know a lot of you are hoping or waiting the easterlies in the winter and they never arrive. Uh, you get through to spring, get through to April and May and you just have weeks and weeks of easterly wings. It's very, very typical for the time of year and the reason this happens is because we lose the polar vortex, we lose the cold temperatures in the Arctic, temperatures are rising now in the Arctic, uh, so we're losing that contrast in temperatures between the pole and the tropics that drives the zonal westerly flow in the winter. Because you've got severely cold air sitting over the North Pole in the winter. You've still got really warm air down in the tropical Atlantic and through the tropics. And so in the mid-latitudes, that temperature contrast will fuel, drive the zonal westerly flow. And that's why, despite the fact that in winter you do tend to have attempts at building up Scandinavian highs and blocking areas of high pressure, unless something unusual happens, they typically don't come to very much. And you just keep those westerlies churning away. But, but I don't get to this time of year we are losing that temperature contrast very rapidly which means you start getting these blocking areas of high pressure centering over Scandinavia so this is all very very typical it's nothing unusual uh, at all and uh, eventually of course by the time you get through to the summer we will start to uh, revert to more of an Azores high type uh, pattern. I was going to see whether the uh, postage stamps from the Icelandic Met Office had updated uh, yet for today but they haven't so I can't show you the postage stamps from the ECMWF at the Icelandic Met Office so therefore we will just finish with the uh, CFS V2 for the next month so these are 500 millibar heights broken down into week periods. The first week period taken from the 7th to the 13th of April. The coming week will have low pressure out to the west southwest of the UK. It'll have high pressure blocking to our north and northeast. We'll be bringing in an easterly wind uh, with a wind flow uh, rather like that in the week ahead. Getting through to uh, week two, we see a change in the orientation of the high pressure. This is the 14th to the 20th of April. The high pressure then is centred to the east and southeast and south of the UK. Low pressures out to our west. This will pull up much milder, even warmer air, if that's right, from a southerly direction. So that could turn really warm, uh, really warm for April. Um, and it will still be mainly dry with uh, bags of sunshine. Then we get through to week three. This is the 21st to the 27th of April. The high pressure is over and to the southeast of the country, so it's kind of like sitting across Central Europe. Again, that looks like a dry and warm pattern. That's going to be bringing the wind up from a southerly to southwesterly type direction. And look at this. Week four is the 28th of April to the 4th of May, uh, and the high pressure is over the UK, and it's building up to the northeast as well. The low pressure is up there. The jet stream is pushed up there too. So... If this is right, it looks like we're in for a lot of high pressure. Again, over the next four weeks, it's going to be lots of dry weather. Um, and uh, we're going back to pretty warm conditions as well uh, at times, if this is right. Once we get the chilly sort of eases out of the way over the next few days, it looks like we're into a warm and dry pattern for the second half of April and going into May. And finally, just talking of May, this is what the CFS 700 millibar height anomaly is looking uh, like for May at the moment. It has a mid-Atlantic ridge extending up towards the south of Greenland, so signs of a little bit of northern blocking uh, there. And uh, if we come over this side, maybe just a few hints and a bit of a trough sitting to our northeast. If that's right, could be relatively cool, perhaps, during May, with winds from the north or northeasterly. Uh, direction. Temperature anomalies look very close to average at the moment from the CFSV2 uh, for May. And precipitation anomalies they look close to average uh, as well. I don't think you've got much of a signal for temperature and precipitation uh, anomalies during May. The pattern though does look like one of the mid-Atlantic ridge, possibly extending up to the south of Greenland. If that did happen then you would expect quite a coolish sort of uh, May. We shall see about that. We'll keep an eye on it over the next few uh, days and weeks. Finally, if you would like to become a patron and help to support Gazwebbins, then all you need to do is come to the Gazwebbins Patreon page. We've got 61 patrons uh, so far, so hello and thanks very much to our 61 uh, patrons. If you would like to join them, 
and become a patron for Gaz Love. It's all you need to do come to the Gaz Love is patron page, sign up to the uh, for a patron account, and uh, you can pledge an ongoing monthly donation from one dollar a month upwards. Uh, you'll pull in with everybody else, and uh, you will become a formal patron for Gaz Love. You'll get a shout out in videos and say thank you very much for becoming a Gazwebby's patron. Alternatively, if you'd just like to give a one-off donation to uh, Gazwebby's, so you can do it through PayPal. This is the Gazwebby's PayPal page. You just come here, very simply sign into your PayPal account. Most people have one of those. And you can send a one-off donation to Gazwebby's. Again, you'll get a mention in the videos. We'll say thanks so much to you for um, becoming a donor for Gazwebby's. Um, and uh, that would be great if you'd like to do that. You're helping us to pay for our website and keep the content online. So a big thank you. Uh, hello and a big thank you to all of our patrons. And hello and a big thank you to all of our donors for Gazwebby's. Right, I think that's it for Gazwebby's study roundup for uh, today. We'll be back later on with the uh, first update for ESA. There's some quite nice looking charts actually there within the GFS, you'll have noticed, for ESA. So hopefully update number one coming up this evening for Easter. Won't have any nasty surprises. Hopefully we'll have uh, a nice first Easter 2019 update. We shall see. And that'll be with you later on today. Also, of course, the um, fifth summer 2019 analogs update will be placed on the summer updates and forecast page later on with a written summary as well. But at uh, 35 minutes, bit of an extended one. That's all for now. And thanks for watching.